started for real. So this week's picture is come comes glorious from the women's basketball game yesterday. During halftime, they did a mascot um, basketball game, and that is Muddy the Mudcat from the Loe Brewers team, not Megan Ramsey's, which is fantastic. I wish I was there. I was not. Anyways, QR code off sun. Everybody in person here, and I think everybody online too. Maybe not Garrett or someone else, but anyways. So here's your chance. Scan it. No one here. Scan it. Graph of the week. Aiden made a graph and posted it on Twitter. So we wanted to let him come up and talk about it. So left afterwards. So my name is Aiden. I'm a freshman in the semester, uh, joining the last semester. Um, so I found this data set on GitHub from this user who cleaned a bunch of wind speed data and other data like temperature and the scores from games going from like 1980 all the way up to the 2018 season when the Eagles won the Super Bowl, so 2017, 2018. And so just like in our studio, I just plotted all the games from 2000 to 2018. I excluded 1980, 2000, and just uh, plot the slope, I guess, and the correlation more statistic. Cool. Anyone have any questions or want to comment anything? I think it looks really good. No. You know any of the obscure data points? <laughs> uh, no, I don't. I, I didn't really look too much into like the maximum minimum. There's but. a pattern you guys can see at zero. There's a lot of points. Anyone want to guess why that is? That it's not David because I already told him. Yeah, but how do you how, how do you how do you know that there's zero wind? Is the question. In a dome. Boom! You're in a dome. There's no wind, so that's why there's kind of a big spread there. Is because you just kind of play it how it is. So, but which of the was the one like all the way at the top? So, one right there. Who scored the most points? I feel like that's the Rams. Wasn't that the games? Rams. The Raiders and Chiefs on the Monday night game. That might be it too. I don't know. There's a couple different options, but I mean, I think the Rams and Chiefs have like a hundred, like ten or something. That sounds right. Maybe that's that's what I'm thinking. That was supposed to be played in Mexico or whatever. Yeah. That's the that's the game I was thinking of. Oh, that's yeah, that's only 2018, so that may not be it. I don't know. Feel free to like mess around the data. That's that's why we leave the data in the in the comments or in the sub or the caption, so you can just like look it up later. Thanks, Aiden. Everybody, give me a round of applause. Last something we're going to try to do for the next little while instead of doing trivia we're going to do a graph of the week so if you make some kind of chart graph table whatever and post it on twitter and tag us at ncsu sec we'll try to pick one a week and let you speak about it that being said we'll like or retweet pretty much anything so do it uh we want to be a club that does stuff rather than just like looks at everybody else and says oh they're doing really cool stuff so we want to do stuff think and do anyways uh so this week we're gonna do another modeling tutorial. If you guys can pull out our studio, that would be awesome. That's what we're gonna load up next. So in the past, we've talked about a couple of different things. We've talked about plotting, we've talked about manipulating data, but now we wanna do some kind of actual analysis. So the packages we're gonna need this week are the tidyverse that we've been using, I could spell. We're going to need um, ggplot2. And we're going to need the hoopar package. Oh, this is probably a great time if I haven't closed that tab. If you have not joined our club Discord and you want to, feel free to, because I figured out everybody was sick and tired of baseball data by asking in the club Discord. So if you want your opinion to be heard, you should join that. Um, if you have not used the Hoopar package before, remember you need to do install.packages Hoopar before you actually get to library it. Everybody good? All right. So the first thing that we're gonna do is um, we're gonna pull the play-by-play -play data for this current year. So to do that, we're going to make a variable called PBP and then use the hoopar package. 
specifically the load underscore men's basketball PVP play by play. Then we're going to use that symbol, um, the pipe, which means it's like kind of thin. If you kind of kind of do like a little recap for those that weren't here last semester. And now we're going to make a new variable. It's called the score differential. And so that's going to be the home score minus the away score. You could do that the other way around, but it would make better sense for you guys to just kind of follow along because we, it might get a little bit more confusing down the road. So let me explain kind of what we're doing. We're going to do two kinds of projects today. Um, there's this thing called regression. Have Who's heard of regression before? Okay, so that's a fair bit. If you're in business, it may be called like a trend line. So we're going to go over two different types. We're going to go over linear and logistic regression. Linear regression is probably what you guys are most familiar with. Who's heard of logistic regression? Cool, perfect. That's fantastic. So logistic regression, or for linear regression, you do it in the equation of a line, right? So equals beta zero plus beta one x one plus dot dot dot. What this means is you're doing an equation of a line. So you have an intercept, a slope for your x one, slope for your x two, so on. Logistic regression takes a little bit different of a form. It takes the form y hat equals e to the t over one plus e to the t where t equals your beta zero plus beta one x one, so on. Can anyone think of a reason why this might be useful? Or do you want me to give you a reason why it could be useful and then figure out like what's special about like this formula? Let's do that one. So one of the reasons we can use logistic regression is for something like wind probability. That's what we're gonna to try to do today. Another reason, we could do it is if we want to say what are just the chances that a putter makes a putt, uh, a free throw shot, that kind of stuff. So, what are special about kind of percent stuff? They're always bound between zero to one percent or zero to one hundred percent. So, if you look at it, we can have this. The minimum of this would be if that was zero and that was zero, we could just get zero, right? You can have zero percent makes whatever. Or if this gets really really big. From goes to infinity, this goes into infinity, then like it gets really, really close to one. That's all the math for today. We were good. So don't retain it if you're not really a math person. So that's the two different things we're going to do. We're going to use logistic regression to kind of do like a win probability. And we're going to do linear regression to try to do point differential because you can score however many points you want. It's just one team wins and one team loses still. So that's why we want to use linear regression because that could be, you could outscore somebody by 100 points or negative 100, whatever. That's kind of the idea. So going back to see the code. We have we should have our play-by-play -play data. Does everybody have play-by-play -play data in? Sometimes it takes a second to load. All right, so one, if we look at it real quick, we have all of our variables and their names. One thing that I wish it had that it doesn't currently have is who won the game in each row. So we need that when you have like a predictor variable what we're actually predicting, like who won. So to do that, we're going to find the winners is what I'm going to call my variable. So we're going to take the play-by-play -play, uh, type. We're going to group by the game ID. That's the Spanish keyboard. What that does is in R's head, it takes all of our play by play. And for every unique game ID, it groups those together. So that way it does the same operation, but only on in each, only within each group rather than the whole thing. So in, within these groups, we're going to filter where the game play number equals, equals, equals the maximum game play number. Basically saying, all right, what is the last play of the game in our play-by-play -play data set? From there, we're going to ungroup. So we're going to break out of those groups. And we're going to build on two columns. So we're going to use the mutate statement. 
to do the winner. So the winner would be the team that has more points, right? And we've already defined our score differential, score differential variable as well. You guys kind of get that. So we know our winner is the home team minus the away team. So if the home team has more points, our score differential is going to be positive. So we're going to use a case win statement, which is kind of like an if else statement, but inside of a mutate. So everybody get what an if else statement does, it kind of lets you go through logically. If this is the case, then we're going to do this. If this is the case, then we do this. This is very similar to that. So it's a case win. When the score differential is greater than zero, we're going to assign winner a one. When score differential is less than zero, we're going to assign it a zero. We're also going to make our final margin of victory variable, which is just uh, home underscore score minus uh, away underscore score. Does that make sense to everybody? I'm trying to make sure if it makes sense to me. I think I'm going to goof it. All right. So now, one of the, there's a current error in the data. This will be fixed probably in a few weeks. We need to filter out the tip offs because that there's something going wrong with those. So we're going to do game underscore play underscore number does not equal one. So tip off is always the first play of the game. So we need to get rid of those for the time being. And we're going to select three variables. So we're going to select game ID, winner, and the final margin. That all goes in a different data frame called winners. So that way for every game that we have, which is each game is represented by one row, we know if the home team won or the away team won, one for the home team winning, and we know the final margin of victory. Everybody good? Did I lose anybody there? All right. So we currently have two data frames. So it's kind of like this. This is winners. And this is the play by play data. So winners has three columns that we have there. So we have game ID. We have winner. And we have final margin. And we want to attach it to the side so that we get kind of like one giant. That's a terrible thing. We get kind of one giant rectangle. Does that make sense? So we got to look at play by play. So we got to figure out how we can join those together because if we have nothing in common, then we're just kind of haphazardly putting it all together. Does that make sense? We know play by play has game ID, which is perfect for us. So we're going to use what's called a join statement. I think we've used this in the past. Maybe a merge statement. Have we used a merge statement in the past? Anybody remember? Okay. Join statements very, very similar. So we're going to make a new variable called full play by play. We're going to left join, which means we're going to take this one, keep it as is, and join, physically join that and bring it together. So we need a left join, uh, play by play. And winners. And then we're going to say by what variable we're joining by. Well, we're going to join by game ID. So we took a look at that for the second. We, you see, we have 57 variables. So we have 55 from play by play. And we have winners, which has three. But one of those in each is game, game ID. So we don't have to put it in there twice. So we have 57 columns of full play-by-play. -play. Anyways, and we're going to reduce that down. We don't need all that data. So we're going to keep uh, just a few. We're going to keep by using the select statement end game seconds. Up remaining. 
score differential, like so the current differential of that certain play by play. We're going to keep the home team spread. We're going to keep who wins the game play number, game ID, and the final margin. And then finally, we need to get rid of games that don't have a winner. So that when you use another filter statement is dot in a winner, because there's some games we're getting data from the ESPN play by play. So some games don't have a winner in that because they got canceled for some reason, or there's some kind of other wacky stuff going on for ESPN. Everything makes sense there. Everybody following. Any more importantly, any questions? Oh, yeah, that's probably really useful to know. So the exclamation point can be called a couple different things. Some people call it the bang symbol. Uh, I always think of it as the word not. So where we have filter not in a winner, some of our columns may just not have any zero or one the way we define it, right? So we'll take that, we'll find where it is in A, and then say we want all those except where it's in A. So for example, if we did, if we just ignored the is.na, which I did that way too often, we'd look at the pull by play by play, and we don't have a winner for any of them, which is not what we want. So we need to get rid of where the is.na and then that gives us our data. Great question. Anything else? Yeah. Yes. There is a good reason that you could use a merge function. Most of the time they function the same way. Left joins are a little bit more common. I don't exactly know the reason why you would use one versus the other. Sometimes it adds columns that you don't want or don't doesn't add columns that you don't want when you're using the merge, I think. So going with left left join or right join, you can use the same thing, but just switch the order that you join them together. I would probably go with that. But that's a good question. That's above me. <laughs> Anybody else? Cool. We're going to create two different models here, kind of like how I explained earlier. We're going to have a linear and a logistic model. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to create the linear model. We're going to say win margin model. This is what I'm going to call it. You can call it whatever. So in R, there's a really nice function called the LM function. Anybody know what that stands for? Linear model. Yeah. Perfect. So the way that you do this, or I'll write out the actual equation that we're going to do. We're going to do at our final margin equals some intercept, I'm going to call it beta zero, plus some slope times score differential. plus another slope times seconds remaining. There's a lot more stuff you could be using in this. I just wanted to keep it really simple for now. So the betas look confusing. They really aren't that hard. It just means we're multiplying something times the score differential to get the final margin of victory, plus something times how many seconds are remaining to get this, the final margin. And of course, Sometimes we might get something and it just doesn't work the way we want. So instead of always having our line go into the origin, zero, zero, we, we're just kind of moving it up. So that's the reason why we have this beta zero term. Does that make sense to everybody? Cool. So the real question is, how do we write this in a way that R understands it? So the way that you do that is you take what's on your left side of your equation. So final margin, which I put 
as final underscore margin. Use the tilde, like the thing that goes over the N in Spanish. It should, on my computer, it's right above the tab key. So you do final margin tilde. Then you do score differential plus in game seconds remaining. Okay. This looks great, except we're missing one thing. We haven't told the model where to look for the data. So we need to specify that data equals full play by play. Reiterate, we're using the full play by play data and we're modeling final margin by using score virtual and how many seconds are left in the game. Because obviously, as your time gets less, it's hard to come back from being a lead, right? Or your, um, if we're in this case, your final margin of victory will kind of stable out a little, little bit just because, like, how many points can you realistically score in five seconds? Probably not that many, especially at the end of the game. If you're worrying about 20, it's kind of going to stable out. So we'll run that model. That should be pretty quick. And we're going to do our other model now. Uh, this is our win margin. Now we're going to do our logistic model. So this is our win probability. Win probability. So I'm going to call it win prob model. There's not a nice way to do LM, so, but there's one that's similar as GLM. And it works the same exact way as LM does as far as writing out the equation. We still want to, this time we want to predict the winner as a function of score differential and in-game seconds remaining. I'm just going to copy that. There's a few things we need to do left. First, we need to do data is from the full play by play. The other thing we need to do is family equals and in quotes binomial. I don't think it has to be in quotes, but I always put it in quotes because it works. So what this is telling or is we want to use that equation e to the t over one plus e to the t. I was curious, that kind of looks like this. Kind of like a big S, except it never reaches one and it never reaches zero. So it always keeps it within the bounds. It's kind of what our binomial logic does. So you can run that. You should be able to run that. Oh, hot enough on a margin. Yeah. Any questions? That's why up here we assign winner, like the home win means a one and the away win means a zero, is because our y values for this logistic regression model have to be either zero or one. You can't have like half a win, right? You either completely win or you completely lose. Any questions about the models and stuff that we did there? Any issues computing wise? Yes. Yeah, so. so that's what's telling R to use this e to the t plus one over e to the t. Otherwise, it does some kind of other regression that we're not going to really cover today. Okay. Good question. No questions in chat, so we're good to keep on going. So as you can see, there's a lot of stuff up here, and it looked kind of messy. So this is our football play by play. This is our environment where all of our stuff is stored. We also have stuff in here for our models. So our, this win marge uh, model is exactly what we did. There's a lot of stuff packed within that. So we're going to add those to our, we're going to add our predicted values to our data frame. So we're going to, let me type that in. Predicted. So we'll do new full play by play gets our full play by play. 
We're going to use a mutate statement. That's how we add new columns to our data frame. So we'll say predicted win probability equals win underscore probability underscore model. One of the things in there is fitted values. So that's saying if we took and made our model and then we plug back into the data that we used to make the model, that's what value would come out. Does that make sense? That's what our fitted values are, what we actually predicted. So if we wanted to do our predicted win margin, it's the same thing. It's win underscore margin model dollar sign fitted values. Cool. So right now we have our full play by play data set and we have our win probability model in, we have our predicted win margin model in. Now for the fun stuff, we're gonna make cool graphs. One thing you guys may not have noticed or have seen is if let's say we go to ESPN for a second, um, let's look up the NC State versus UVA men's basketball game this year. I had to pick a good one. One of the things that's not unique, but lots of websites do this, is you look in the URL, they'll have different numbers at the end for game IDs. That's how we access our game IDs in our data set that we're gonna use. So for example, if I change this, just to say whatever that was plus 60, it switched to a completely different game. But I'm gonna use the NC State versus Virginia one because we won. So let's get our full data from NCSU versus UVA. Again, you can try Googling and say you wanted to pull for some reason the Carolina game from Saturday, or if you have if you do the same thing with the women's data, do it for the women's game Sunday, much better. Work similar processes. So we're gonna do our new play-by-play. -play. Is our new full play-by-play. -play. So we're starting with this data set that we have here. We're filtering down to where our game ID is whatever number we just pulled from ESPN, that one up there. It's not working. Let me try that again. Four, three, seven, oh, six. All right. Try doing it with that number. For some reason, the one I copied from up here is being silly. Well, I don't know. This is the one that worked earlier, so I want to trust it. <laughs> we look at our new play by play data. You can tell it's, yeah, we're good to go. So that's great. We have our win probability, which means that on our graph that we're going to be somewhat making, we'll have some measure of time on our x axis. So as the game goes along, the home win probability will get closer and closer to one the right we beat them. But the ones on the ESP that you may have seen look something like this or it'll be like 100% that Green Bay wins the game versus 100% that Kansas City wins the game. It'll kind of bounce back and forth in between and then get closer to one, right? So that's kind of how I wanted mine to look. So let's kind of think a little bit here about how we could get from a scale of zero to one to 100 to 100 or one to one if we're talking about percents, right? Well, we know the halfway point is 0 0.5. We want that to map to each team having zero, like it's dead even in the here, like the full big one, right? We also know if the home team is completely going to win, then we still want that to map to one. And if the away team is going to win, we want that to map to 100% too. Does that make sense? Or I guess negative 100%.
So one way we can do that is we can just transform it. We can say, all right, y equals two x so minus one, where x is our wind probability. So what that does, we have our minus one, one, two, over one. That's kind of how we're transforming our wind probability. Does that make sense? I feel like I explained that badly. Good, everybody. All right. So we'll do that with a mutate statement. New win probability equals two times the predicted win probability minus one. You could potentially put parentheses here and around the two. That does the same thing. Now we're gonna make pretty pictures, make our graphs that you see people do. We're gonna start with the wind probability chart. So I'm gonna get, hopefully get some feedback on how to help make this. How do we start our GG plots? Anybody? You can feel free to call it out or if not. What statement always comes first? Or do I need to give y'all some time to catch up with typing it? Y'all good? Okay. All right. Any any questions? Let's start. Let's go back and stuff. Any questions for what we have here so far? No. Everybody good? Everybody understand somewhat most of the code? <laughs> uh, all right. Cool. We're gonna make the wind probability charts like the one you see on ESPN, somewhat like that. So how do we start a GG plot? Anybody? Like, what statement comes first? Yeah, you just do the plain GD plot statement, right? The first argument in that is our data. So we're going to do this new PBP. PBP. Looking back, I should have called it UVA versus NCSU. Then we're going to do our aesthetics. So we name our X variable and our Y variable. One of the ways that we measure time is just who has possession of the ball. So that's the easiest way to say as the game goes along is game play number one always comes before game play number two, such on and such on. Because when you're dealing with play by play data, like let's say, let's say we get a foul and then there's a media timeout right after. If we just say this much time is left on the clock, then it kind of gets messy because we don't know, all right, was the foul committed? And then the timeout, that's kind of an obvious one, but was it a foul and then the technical, or was it a double foul? Who got the foul first? That kind of situation happens. So we're going to use the game play number as our X variable. So that's our time. And then for our Y variable, what should we use? Yeah, new win probably. We're going to use geom underscore line to kind of get to connect all those points. And then we get to the fun stuff, the um, labels, the themes, and that kind of stuff. So we'll start with our labs. Or do you want to look at it before we get into like customizing it? Let's look at it first. Oh, I forgot to put pipe. That'll mess up the code. There we go. I don't remember the game at all. It was kind of even to start off with. And then we started losing, and then we started winning, and then we won, right? But from this graph, it looks like we got down really, really bad. But if you look at the scale, then it's just like, well, maybe we weren't down so bad because someone says that we had a 50% chance of losing. 
Whereas up here, it looks it doesn't look near as bad, but we had like almost a hundred percent chance of winning. So the way that we can adjust our y-axis to like be always from one hundred percent to negative one hundred percent is we can use the y limbs statement. I was going to try to draw that, but oh well. So y limbs, we want to go from negative one to positive one. So if we look at that. Or Y lim, L I M, not the S. That looks much better, right? It doesn't look like we were down so much to UVA. It really weren't. We were only down like maybe six, eight points, came back. All right. So now let's add our labels and that kind of stuff. So labs, Texas. What do we want to call gameplay number? What do we want to put for that? Anybody have anything they want to shout out? I'll put mine. What's up? Oh, oh yeah. What do you, what do we want to put for the x axis? What's up with me? I don't. No, you're totally fine. If you move up here, there's one in here that you can use. You can read. Uh, okay, that works. <laughs> okay. Nah, totally good. Anyways, so I'm going to call it number of plays into the game. That's kind of what it is. Call it whatever you want, but make it something so that everyone knows what it is. Our Y is our what? Probability. Uh, so that's what that looks like. Like, all right, that looks better. Let's add a title. Uh, NCSU versus EVA 2022, our men's basketball. Win, probability, chart. Caption. What do we what do we always include in the caption plot? Just so that like yeah, make sure. Yeah, where you got your data from and your name so that people don't just like steal your thing and don't give you credit for it. So created by NCSU stack. Most of Billy. Data from NC, no, um, it's data from Hoopar. Cool. So there's some things in here called themes. Who's heard of a ggplot theme before? Has anybody used one of those? Cool. I love themes just because they make your plot look really, really nice, really, really quick. So you can do theme underscore, and you can see there's a lot of things that pop up. You can kind of just pick one. So, for example, we want to do classic where I did here. It makes it look different. It kind of sticks out in the background and whatever. There's also a different package you can use that's called GG Themes. And it has a ton of fun themes. Like, this is the one I like to use a lot Theme 538. It's like crash from 538. Or let's see what else. You can get your graphs to like Excel or whatever you feel like. But for this one, I'm going to choose classic. Feel free to explore and do whatever. And finally, if you like look at this, like outside of just the thing, you're um, the title is kind of off centered. And so I always like fixing that. It's because it's not hard. You use the theme statement. And you, it is plot.title equals element underscore text. H just equals 0 0.5. And it centers that for you. Really? What's this up? be a dumb question. No, you're fine. But theoretically, could you change the game ID to a game that's currently going on? 
No. So the data repository only okay, so updates. Only update after games. Got not it. just after games. It's always like one a few times a day, okay. but not oh, until after yeah. the games are over. Last week. Yeah, okay. he was mentioning that, that last week. If you scrape the data, data live yourself, which is completely different and hard yeah, to do, yeah. then yes, yeah, so you, you, you could do that. it live. Okay. But for this, no, you have to kind of wait till the game is over rather than just waiting for live. That's a good question, though, for um, any, anything else? One thing that I do want to mention, because it's bit me in the butt a couple of times, if you use a theme statement and like a theme from like GG themes or what, one of the built-in ones, make sure you do the theme statement after, because let's say if you don't, the theme underscore classic will overwrite it. That's not right. what's going on all right cool i goofed up something oh well anyways just don't do it because it'll mess up everything and you don't want that so oh because i didn't put the 0 0.5 let's try it again there we go see how it kind of puts the draft back off centered you know, you know, you put in the center of it. It's because the theme on classic, the default for it is to keep it on the left. And so it'll overwrite what you've already put in the theme statement. So long story short, put your theme statement after your, your theme that you select from GD themes or wherever else. You get pretty graphs. Cool. So let's make the one with our predicted win margin. All right. So this one should be a little bit easier to do now that we've done ggplot. So in our ggplot, what is our data frame? Anybody? Nobody wants to help me out. Okay. New play-by-play. -play. Um, our x variable, we're still going to use that game play number. But this time we're going to use the y's are predicted win margin. And we're still going to use that same geom line. Uh, oh, I didn't put margin, I just put marge. Cool. So, I mean, you can kind of tell, all right, we were losing just a little bit and then we pop back up to be winning by a decent amount. Um, usually you want to do a similar thing here is you want to do a Y limb, let's say from a negative 20 to 20. No, because we go a little bit higher than 20. We'll go negative 30 to 30. Again, you have to adjust based on like what game you're doing, because if it's Alabama versus, I don't know, San, St. Francis State, Marion College, technical, whatever, It'll be a blowout, whereas if it's, I don't know, Alabama Davidson, it might be a close game because Davidson beat him earlier this year. Or NC State with anybody would be a close game, so you're fine. Anyways, so then we would do the similar, a similar thing. What's up? Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> Anyways, we're gonna do the same type of thing for the labs, except we're gonna change it instead of win probability, we'll do expected win margin and we'll change some stuff beam classic and center our title as well any questions on anything that's all i have for sure yeah um, didn't you have like the data from PR? Like, not all the games. There's also a specific game on you. Yeah. Yeah. What game you want to do from 2022? No, like, I don't have a game in mind. I don't have a game in mind. There's 
Yeah. Yep. No, you shouldn't have. Oh, I mean, you have to change the title title because that kind of stuff. But yeah, you should be good to go. Let's just pick. I have a game ID for you. Yeah, what's up? Four zero one three six four three five one. It made me very happy. I was at this game. Yeah. Yeah. Which one you want to do? Which um, one? This is the win probability, just yeah, because why not? So this is bad. Rutgers versus Purdue. Yes. And who was the home team? Oh, Rutgers. All right. Let's look at this. This might be actually a really good example. So it says at the end they have a probability of winning of about what is that? You'd say twenty five percent or so. Yeah. Like it's in their favor. Yeah. So you notice how we definitely know the result was that Rutgers won. Yeah, but like it doesn't st still it still doesn't say one hundred percent they actually like won. Anybody can can anybody think of a reason why that would be? The ball went in after time expired. No, not not quite that. What do we let's let's think about it this way? So we have our win probability. What do we put into our model? Yes, yeah, so we put two kind of time. So um, time. Which, what second remaining? Yeah. And we'll put something else in it. Yeah, it's yeah. different. Does that does that tell the whole story of a game? Uh, no, I can't spell. What other stuff would you probably include in this model? Just spitball ideas. Yeah, possession, fouls, fouls, the foul situation, fouls, timeouts. What else would you include? Yeah, state that's a huge one that some people will include. This might be a team ranking. Okay. Yeah. It would be hard to find this, but like for example, if it was an inbound play where the ball is inbounded, no, no, that's 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 all okay. so let me explain. This is the model you guys came up with. Let me give you an example of what that ended would look like. Uh we are playing in PNC Arena. The score is the home team is winning by six points. They have the ball with 10 fouls, both teams have 10 fouls. Neither team has timeouts left and there's one second remaining. Cool, but like, what are we missing there? I didn't say who the home team was. I didn't say who the away team was, because that matters, right? I yeah. mean, you wouldn't have to use the same model for Alabama Wright State as you would for Duke Carolina, for example. Like that's completely different scenarios, personnel-wise and whatnot, so. Including actually who the home team was and the away team, that's kind of important too. There's a few ways that we can measure how good models are. Um, I will do that for the for the uh, model with the uh, win margin. So one way you can do that is summary win margin model. Can you guys see that down here? You can try that on your own as well. And I'll produce you got some really nice numbers. Um, so it'll tell you exactly what these coefficients are. The estimate right here, that tells you what your beta is. So we were at that model earlier or whatever, or even like this, you put all the betas here, beta one, beta two, whatever. That's what those are under the estimate column. And this is your beta zero, your intercept. One of the things that you can check. What's up? Um, question: How would this like deal with games that went into overtime? That's a very good question. Because the game I was going to look up was going to be arguing against Nebraska. But I had that was my original example. I like dead serious. That was my example. I was like, this looks messy. I don't want to deal with this. I also didn't think I'd have ten minutes left to explain all this kind of stuff. So let's put let's pull that up. I have that number right here. Yeah, that's a very valid question because I don't know how many games have went into overtime this year, much less 
three overtimes or four, sorry, four overtimes. So this is supposed to be in versus Nevada. So it just kind of goes up and down, but like we don't really know like much else. Like there's a lot more things you need to put in this model besides just how much time is left and what's the score, right? That's, that's probably the end of the story there. Of, is it an overtime? That's another thing you could put in your model. Do you have the actual win probability graph? Yep. And the last like little dart. Yeah. If this was football, it would have been hilarious for that Penn State man overtime game. Now that uh -huh. we're talking about overtime. Bro, <laughs> I could imagine. Yeah, big time football. Let's go. Uh, just the one. Yeah, so again, this is the actual model. And this is the one that we made. They're always different because ESPN has their own inputs they put in as well. So, but again, this the goal for today was to teach you what linear and logistic regression were. And there's different ways that you could apply it. So can you anybody spout out ways that you think linear or logistic regression could be used outside of wind probability and projected wind margin? Yeah. Could you possibly like project how someone's career is going to look in five years? Yeah. You do something similar to that. Yeah, what's up? How many earned runs? Yeah, your point score. Yeah, point score, earned runs. Which one would that be? A logistic or linear regression? Oh, logistic. Why? What's the minimum amount of points that I can score in a year? Zero. Zero. But what's the maximum I can score in a year? Okay. Exactly. So you want to use linear regression for that. You're not bound up top of the one. What's up? You can do like uh, how much someone saves and saves. How much money gets paid? Yeah. I actually did that project with linear regression. So yes, can't confirm. It was a terrible project, but it was a project. So, did you do like the expected number of hits like in an inning? In an inning, yes. I thought you were going to say for a person over their career. Oh. Absolutely, any one of those would work. Okay. Where are some other uses of logistic regression? Anybody want to shout one out? Yep. Yep. That I, I can't confirm that he is logistic regression. They probably use a more complicated version of something similar to logistic regression called like a boosting tree. Same principle though. Absolutely. Yeah. Logistical just feel like the binomial. Yeah. Yep. That's really how it works. That's why we. Okay. I was like not thinking that when we talked. That's that's why we talked in binomial. <laughs> that's exactly the reason why. I just didn't want to go way. That's a whole other rabbit hole that we don't. Could you use a regression? Is that kind of how I guess they do expected goals added in soccer? Yeah. Or, or for sure. Are you looking for a water bottle? Are you looking for a water bottle? Because one left the water bottle. Anyways. Oh, John, are you ready for roller coaster clubs? Oh, fun. No, this is four times less club. We have about five more minutes. We're almost done. Oh. Sorry. You're totally good. You can stay. <laughs> Might not want to. No, you're totally good. Yeah. yeah. But anyways, yeah. What, what were you saying? Oh no, it's just about expected goals. Added. Yeah, expected yeah. goals. That's that's the that's the new regression. One of the, that's what I thought it was. One of the one of the things that you could probably do is if you thought about binding averages. What's the highest the batting average can be? A thousand. A thousand. A thousand. One. What's the lowest can be? Zero. Zero. Steal rate or not steal rate. Slugging percentage. You could do a logistic regression because it's bounded up top, right? You can just kind of scale up the way we did it. What's up? Yeah. Any, any kind of stat, most of the stuff that we're doing that you can think of, you can either do with linear or logistic regressions. You're totally good. So, any other questions before roller coaster com club comes in? So who's staying for roller coaster club? I don't know. I might stay because that sounds epic. Anyways, yeah, that's all that we have. Um, if you didn't get the chance to sign in, here is the QR code again. I'll give you a few seconds to sign that. Oh, let me make it big.
Um, 